Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, July 24th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Just a quick update that we are still seeing the new web logic vulnerability being exploited. We have now seen the obligatory crypto miner. Also, interestingly, some DDoS malware. Not sure exactly why they are going after web logic, but I guess it's just part of the standard tool set being deployed to vulnerable servers. Well, and probably the other thing we need as little as a new web logic vulnerability is a new version of the Spectre vulnerability. This particular version, Spectre RSB, is targeting the return stack buffer and it's well a yet another way how you can take advantage of the speculative execution in modern processors. The return stack buffer essentially holds the last 16 addresses that the processor worked on. And again, it's sort of meant to optimize how the processor determines what to do next. Well, uh, this return stack buffer can be manipulated and as a result, arbitrary code can be executed. As previous Spectre attacks, this does not just affect Intel CPUs, even though those were the ones that were tested by these researchers, but it should affect AMD and ARM processors as well, because they pretty much use the same RSB mechanism. Also, since the nature of this Spectre attack is quite different from previous attacks, existing patches do not really apply to this vulnerability. And Chihu 360 is reporting that Microsoft patched a vulnerability in an explorer in July that was actually originally patched in May. The vulnerability in question here is CVE 2018. 8174. In May, this patch was sort of a little bit rushed out because this was an actual exploited vulnerability that was used in target attacks. Now, Microsoft apparently didn't fix the entire vulnerability and had to amend the patch in July to then completely patch this particular problem. Chihu 360 has some proof of concept code that shows how the original patch wasn't really sufficient in order to fix this problem. And as a reminder, today Google is expected to release Chrome 68. One of the major changes in this version of Chrome is that HTTP websites will be marked as insecure. You will see the same or a similar not secure warning in the URL bar that you typically see if a bad certificate is used by a site. Now users will still be able to browse these sites there will be no sort of special screen or so that they have to accept. But nevertheless, probably good time to check that you do have HTTPS deployed across your sites in order to not confuse users. And remember, Let's Encrypt will give you free certificates. And IoT security company Arm is apparently trying to trump up more business with a somewhat sensationalized report about half a billion IoT devices being vulnerable. What they're really talking about here is DNS rebinding. Now, yes, DNS rebinding is a very common attack in IoT devices. The problem is that these devices typically neither use TLS nor or do they check the host name when you're connecting to the device? Because typically you're using the IP address to connect to the device and the device doesn't necessarily know what host name you have it assigned to it. So with that, you end up with DNS rebinding. Now, DNS rebinding is a pretty old attack. I think your first mention was like a late 90s, sort of 98. People sort of came up with that idea that just using the host name as security feature doesn't really work because the host name can be assigned to different IP addresses. Of course, in modern web applications, same origin policy, which is a major security feature here, 
uses the host name just as that security feature that it shouldn't really be used by itself. So what can you do? Well, not really much. Uh, what you should do is probably try to use TLS as much as possible with these devices. Many devices actually do allow you to upload certificates, but it can be a pain in particular in a larger enterprise context. Having your internal certificate authority certainly helps to sort of streamline that process. And secondly, if the device allows you to do it, then yes, you know, check the host name for the device. And and by the way, isolating the device from outside access doesn't really help much here because the trick with DNS rebinding is that the user's browser, which well is in this case the administrator of the device, is used to launch the attack against the device. Quite a number of dependencies here. It's not the most straightforward attack to conduct, but on the other hand, it's not terribly hard. Then if an attacker has a little bit of an idea of what your infrastructure looks like, knows what devices you have and what their IP addresses are, or is just guessing IP addresses, then the attack is not that terribly difficult to conduct. Last thing you should do is make sure you actually do set up a password to access these devices and don't just rely on IP addresses for access control. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.